Hello, my name is Nicole Gafari. I will be a senior in the fall at Avon Lake High School. Um, this summer I worked at Euclid with Holly Engel. I'm in the science internship program for nursing and my project was on nursing compliance with sequential compression devices. This is my background. Most patients in critical care units are immobile. Immobility increases a patient's risk for developing a blood clot. A blood clot generates within the blood vessel and blocks further blood flow. Hospitalized patients are more prone to developing a blood clot, referred to as a deep vein thrombosis, or DVT. DVTs are formed within the deep veins of the body, most commonly in the legs. DVTs are not fatal, but have the potential to break away and travel up the bloodstream, becoming an embolism. Embolisms can cause severe damage by cutting up the blood supply to vital organs like the heart, brain, or lungs. This is a picture of, you know, the difference. Um, there's the normal blood flow, and um, there's the normal blood flow here. Then this is what a deep vein thrombosis looks like, so you can see there's clotting, and then this is the embolism, and it kind of breaks away and can travel up the bloodstream and could go to a vital organ. Um, this is Virchow's uh, triad, and it shows all the risk factors for DVT. And as you can see, there is a lot. And risk factors are cumulative. So if you have one, two, or three, the more you have, the more chance of developing a DVT you will have. So sequential compression devices, or SCDs, are you, um, they are pneumatic um, devices used by physicians and nurses to prevent the formation of a DVT. Um, the device is applied to the lower legs of the patient. SCDs are designed to increase venous circulation and speed up blood flow. SCDs are useful for immobile patients because they imitate the action of walking by the ongoing compression of muscles and veins. The purpose of the study is that without education, the nursing staff may not recognize their crucial role in DVT prophylaxis. Um, so the purpose of this research is to eludicate how nurses are handling SCDs and to promote improvement. My hypothesis is that nursing compliance with SCDs related to accurate computer documentation and device treatment will increase after educational in-service to nursing staff. Um, so, my methodology. To obtain a patient sample, I would use the coronary care unit, CCU, and the intensive care unit, ICU. From this sample, I would monitor those patients with an order for SCDs. I would create a tool to compare computer documentation and placement of device. My tool would look similar to this. So you can see I have a visual and then I have um, a chart so I can tell if they match up. To record data, I would set four time periods designated to checking device placement. Based on my observation, I would record if the SCDs were on or off each patient. The following day, offering adequate time for the nurses to document, I would look through the computer records to determine if the nurses charting matched up with my visual observation. After a designated time of data collection, the educational process would begin through the creation of a poster board presentation and various flyers. The education would focus on the dangers of DVTs, the crucial role nurses play, and the hospital's regulations regarding the use of SCDs. Lastly, I would make myself available to the nursing staff so they can ask me questions regarding my findings. To complete the research, I would repeat the data collection. This would highlight if, nurses, if nursing compliance improved with education. So for my expected results, um, this is because the study would be conducted without the nursing staff knowledge. I would anticipate that the rates would be an accurate representation of the nursing compliance with SCDs. For the initial monitoring, I would accept to find that the majority of nurses are not documenting properly nor frequently. There would also be a low number of SCDs actually placed on the patient's legs. Therefore, the overall compliance would be low. So um, Andrew H. Dombro, an MD, um, had a presentation and highlighted an important part that um, the low compliance rate that I um, would observe could also um, apply to many other hospitals because, as he pointed out, 
One study showed that only 46% of hospitalized medical patients with risk factors for DVT received appropriate prophylaxis. So if we found that um, the compliance rate was low in these hospitals, I'm sure that it would apply to many other hospitals across the country. After um, an educational in-service to the nursing staff, I would expect that SCD pa placement on patients would increase and that, um, that they would be more conscientious, conscientious when applying these to the lower extremities. And then I would also expect the accuracy of the computer documentation to rise. So the overall compliance after an educational in-service would be higher. So I conclude that based on the expected results, I think the study would elucidate the use for SCDs and highlight their importance. Nursing compliance with SCDs will improve and therefore patient care will improve. If correct preventative actions are taken now, it will also be fiscally beneficial for the patient and the hospital. This study would depict the significance of education in hospital setting because it would convey how staff and services can make a difference. Um, improved nursing compliance with SCDs may also promote more effective physician and nurse communication. When the device is ruled as disadvantageous to the patient, nurses must communicate with the physician to discontinue the order. This study would also reveal certain legal issues pertaining to computer documentation. If nurses understand the importance of accurate re record keeping, they can fulfill their legal liabilities in terms of charting. This keeps nurses protected. So I think the study is really important, so I recommend that it be carried out. The time span of the experiment can be left up to the researcher, but the number of patients studied should be a large amount, at least 200 or so. The focus should initially be on critical care patients, but because there are so many risk factors for DVTs, I encourage expanding the research to all those patients who are at risk. The researcher should make educational pieces that are easily understood by the nursing staff, and the researcher must make themselves available to share their knowledge with the nurses. And lastly, I recommend that the researcher publish and puts this study out there so that the hospital workers can become aware of the issue at hand. My acknowledgments. I want to thank Holly Angle and Sally Honus for mentoring me and sharing their knowledge with me. I also would like to thank Nedra Starling and the Office of Civic Education for giving me this wonderful opportunity. And lastly, I want to thank Vicki Gardner and her help for um, on her help on my research project. And also um, Rosalind Strickland, thank you so much.